What about this one? We'll solve this without a calculator too. <laughs> Allison's like, I don't care. I'm still going to use it to Shannon. I like, no. See, there's a question. Volume did what? Volume goes up, so the pressure must do what? Go down. Okay, so it's either going to be A or B. Alright, how much did the volume go up? It went from 12 to 36, that's a factor of 3. 600 divided by 3? 200. <laughs> Did everybody get 200? Yes. Hurts my feelings a little bit. Y'all won't listen. Y'all won't trust me. But y'all can actually think through some of these. Alright, this is our conceptual problem. Here we start here. Which one of these is true if the pressure decreases? Pressure decreases, volume must increase. So it's got to be B. If the pressure increases, pressure increases, volume decreases, it's got to be A, right? I want you to think about it like that. One last one. Come on, Allison, do this without your calculator. That Allison, I'll talk to that Allison over there. I know, sorry. Look at what's happening to the pressure. What happened to pressure? The pressure goes down. It goes from 850 to 425. So what is that? A factor of? Two. Two? So the pressure went down, so the volume must go up by a factor of? Two. Two. So it is? C, 240 millimeters. If you have to solve it using a calculator, P1, V1 equals P2, V2, that's fine. But boy, isn't it nice to be able to think through a problem and solve it too, right? You don't feel any sense of accomplishment by doing that? No? Helium gas in a balloon has a volume of 6.4 liters and 0.7 atmospheres. If the pressure is 1.4 atmospheres, what does the balloon look like? Pressure, when pressure does what? Pressure goes uh, up, so the volume must do. Down. So it's got to be. Okay. A. All right, next law Charles's law. Now we didn't really do Charles's law outside. It was a little bit harder to do. But it talks about the relationship of temperature and volume. Now we have this equation. Okay. What we did outside was really talking about pressure. Now this talks about this says pressure has to stay constant. Okay, pressure can't change and the number of molecules you have can't change. So what happens to the volume if you increase the temperature? Well, if I increase the temperature, the pressure wants to go up, right? But in order for the pressure to stay the same, I can change the volume. So now, temperature and volume are directly related. Anytime you see things that are a ratio like this, equal to a ratio, that means it's one goes up, the other one goes up. Okay? So as the volume goes up, the temperature goes up. Volume goes down, temperature goes down. I asked in the other class, how do you gotta solve problems that look like this? If I if I'm missing one thing here, how do you solve it? 
It's not conversion. How do y'all solve ratio problems? Who's at math 110? Um, cross multiply. Cross multiply, right? And then divide. Who can do that? Who likes doing that? It's not hard, is it? It's pretty easy, isn't it? So multiply these two together, these two together, and then you divide by the one that's on the side with your unknown variable, right? True? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm not worried about rearranging it. I think that's useless. Let's we'll see if we can solve a couple of problems. A balloon has a volume of 785 milliliters at 21 degrees C, and the temperature drops to 0 degrees C. What do we say about temperature in these problems? Must be, no, temperature has to do what? Constant. Not constant, it's V over T equals V over T. So what has to happen? What about temperature? What are the units on temperature? Kelvin. Kelvin. So you can't solve this problem in Celsius. You have to solve it in Kelvin, okay? Now if it asks you for Celsius as a final temperature, you have to do it in Kelvin and change back again at the end, okay? You can't do the cross multiplying in Celsius. You gotta do it in Kelvin. So let's do this one together and then we'll do one where you guys work on it together. So it's V over T equals V over T. So my volume is 785 milliliters over 21 degrees C is what? 291 Kelvin? 94, sorry. It says it right I can't add. What's my new volume? Oh, it's 21. I don't know my new volume, right? And what's my new temperature? 273 Kelvin. 294 is from 21 plus 273, right? So how are we gonna solve this? Multiply these two together, then divide by that, right? Cross multiply, so that means 785 times 273, and then the 294 goes with the V, then I have to bring it back. So this times that, divided by that. Okay? Well, it's this case, what is our answer going to be in? Our answer is going to be in milliliters, right? Because we're looking for volume here. Doesn't matter what the temperature is right now, we're looking for volume. Then we're going to do one in a second where we'll do have to take it back. So you're going to do the product of 785 times 273 divided by 294. Yes. Do we need to round it? Yes. To how many sig figs? In this case, because when I add 273, that's an that's an exact number. So these have three sig figs, and this one only has, this one has three as well. So we'll have three your final answer. So what do we get? Seven hundred twenty-nine milliliters. Everybody get seven twenty-nine. Yes. All right. I look at this one. Work on this one for a minute. My initial volume. 420 milliliters. What's my initial temperature? 291 Kelvin equals 
640 milliliters over T, right? So these two divided by that, right? So if you're going to cross multiply, it's these two multiplied, then divided by that. What is left out, right? So T equals how many Kelvin? 443 Kelvin, but the problem mass for Celsius. Yes, we're all happy with doing it like this. Does this beat doing conversion? No? Who likes doing conversion? You do. I do. All right, next Wednesday we're going to start with Guy Lussac. Remember, no class on Monday. This is as far as I got in the other class because I got so many people here. So, Wednesday, we'll start here. Don't forget the homework for the other chapters up. There'll be a quiz up too. Yeah, come here.